And before I can really even say anything, he just goes, mate, how do you know when it's time to break up with your partner? So my name's Ruben Wax, I'm a trainee counsellor and the channel's aim is to help you empower yourself and those around you. A few weeks ago I came into this room after having breakfast and I get a phone call from my friend Steve and before I can really even say anything he just goes, mate, how do you know when it's time to break up with your partner? And in that moment everything came up in me, everything that I'd just been through with my ex, we'd just broken up five, six months ago from a serious long-term relationship, like living together for around three years. And I just wanted to share everything, tell him my story, tell him everything that we'd been through, everything, all the thoughts I'd had, all the signals, all the discussions and everything that had come into the decision for us to break up. And I just wanted to give him all the advice that I could to help him in this situation. But in that moment, something came up in me, which was, this lesson from this counselling training that I've been doing, which we do often hear, which is that we should be listening twice as much as we talk, We've got two ears, one mouth. And it really came to me strongly in that moment. And just before I started telling my story, I just asked him, what, what makes you say that? And he stopped for a moment and then just reeled off this list of things. I don't feel this. And there's this and, and all of these big reasons. And when he got to the last one, he basically just stopped and, and just had a moment and just said, you know what, I think I've just answered myself. And I got a big rush of pride that, <laughs> I, that I hadn't gone and just told him everything that I'd been through. And that listening, in that moment, it, it gave me such a good example of the power of listening, letting someone come to their own thoughts. I mean, a lot of the time we already know deep inside and we just need to have a mirror there to speak to, to reflect back what we're saying, just to make sure that we really, what we're feeling is right and, and it's okay to feel those things. Giving advice to that person, I would really just be projecting my own experiences of my own relationship onto that person. So. Instead, if you can listen empathically and keep bringing them back to their feelings, so taking them from their heads, logic, down to their heart, what are you feeling truly? Then it can help them to sit in that feeling and, and think, does that feeling make me feel good being there? And what, what really is going on for me? So this was a big lesson in listening empathically and listening effectively and how much it can do to help someone. In another video, what I'm gonna do is go through some of the core skills when it comes to listening, body language, tone of voice. But in this one, I wanna cover some of the key concepts that I've learned over the last few years that have really changed how I see listening and that have really come in handy when I've been in these situations. One thing that's been useful for me over and over again over the years has been learning to sit in people's pain, not running away when they say they're feeling bad and basically not silver lining. So saying like, I'm sure it's gonna get better, like I'm sure it's not as bad as you think, putting the silver linings on things. When someone is really struggling, they wanna be heard, they want to feel like someone understands them. So when we try and stop that, when we, tr when we say, oh, it's probably not as bad as you think, that comes out from our own fear of, allow of, of people being feeling bad around us. We want people to feel good. So that's not a bad thing, but it can be incredibly helpful and meaningful for that person when they say something like, you know what, I just feel really sad at the moment. And for you to say, you feel it, so you feel lonely. Acknowledging the pain that they're going through, naming it, it allows them to, to feel like, you know, someone's actually listening, someone actually gets me. Recently, a, f a friend of mine, she called me up to say that she's been really struggling with, with uh, a mental health issue recently, and it kind of all comes down to self-worth. And I wanted to, you know, say, the way that I see you is you're amazing, like you're an incredible person. And I wanted to share all of that to make her feel better. But having worked through this, learning to sit in that pain, that negativity, I, what I could hear from this, from my friend, she, she was basically saying that she doesn't have any direction. So I said, are you lacking a sense of purpose at the moment? 
I was like, yeah, I really am. So in that moment, I felt incredibly grateful for this empathic listening skill because it deepened that connection with us and it allowed me to help this person much more effectively. But also non-directiveness can be really useful, which is where you allow people just to keep in the flow of what they're talking about. So sometimes when people are talking, we want to jump back to something they said earlier, which was really interesting, or we've, we've thought of a really good point and now we're basically just like, basically just sat there waiting for a moment because we're just like, no, we've got an absolute doozy of a comment to make. I don't know if you ever do that, but I do that a lot, where you're just thinking, I can't wait to make this point and I'm gonna absolutely blow their mind. But it can be really useful for the person to allow them to kind of keep flowing in that stream of consciousness because sometimes when people talk, they start at something a bit more surface level that's manageable and it takes a bit of a flow to get to the more vulnerable, deeper content. So if halfway through that you say, wait a minute, about your dad or, you know, what about your teacher? It, it like brings them out of that flow. It puts a block to it and brings them back. If you've got something really important to say, then it can sometimes be useful just to put it on the back burner, keep just engaging with what they're talking about. And then when they're finished, go, you know what? You said something earlier, I was wondering if I could bring us back there. And then that, that's a new space, it's a new flow for you to get into then. Also something that I kind of briefly mentioned in that story about my friend Steve, is learning when to share your stories. Sometimes when people share a story, I mean, I get this all the time where someone's sharing a story, it really resonates with me and it reminds me of a story of my own and I want to jump in and tell my story. I don't know if you ever get that, but it's like in those moments, we just want to get involved with, with our story. But when we do that, if let's say we share a story back, they've been through something incredibly hard and we share a story that, of something that we think that we've been through that's incredibly hard. If it's not as tough or hard as the, the person's before, we, ri we run the risk of them thinking like, God, like I, I kind of feel bad now because what I've been through is just like so, so much worse than everyone here. But if I share a story and it's way worse, it's a, it's a much more difficult story or something like that, it can really put a dampener on the other person's story. So it's about learning when is the right time to share and when is it the right time to let this person have their moment and shine and maybe just going, that's a really good story that I've remembered, but I'll tell it maybe another day and just let them have that moment. And it allows people to, to, to share in a way where they can get to those places and just it be about them for that moment. And one of my favorite tips when it comes to empathic listening, so where they don't feel judged, was given to me by a family friend of mine who's also a counsellor, Alex, legend. And he basically shared this tip, which is when someone's talking to you, when you wanna ask a question back, try not to use the word why, because it can come across quite aggressive and like we're pointing the finger at them, like, why did you do that? Or why did that happen? When instead, if we asked how, how come that happened or what led you to do that? It asks a better question of, oh, what did lead me to do that? How come I did do that? If you ask someone who's saying that they have anxiety, oh, why do you have anxiety? It's like, oh, I didn't know that I was at fault. And then you're, it, it turns it into a more of a pointing the finger situation. So you want to get to a place where people don't, where they don't feel judged. And the, not asking why is a really good tip for that I've found. And really when it comes to listening effectively and improving communication in general, nothing has been as life-changing for me as nonviolent communication, which I've done a video on here. And you can check out more of my content. You can subscribe below to see when more comes out. And next week's gonna be another one of those self-improvement book recommendations where I talk about the lessons I've learned from these high achievers in this book. So I'll see you then.